What is it that you have to look for in images? One example is that everything counts. Mm -hmm. Everything in an image counts. There is no such a thing that you have a few things which are important and the rest is not. That's not true. Everything counts. Another thing which is very important, it turns out that we don't know how to look. Because it turns out that we have something in our retina, which is called the macula. Mm -hmm. And it's five millimeters by five millimeters. It's the only place where we see sharp. Mm -hmm. The rest is simply to look at the movement around us, yeah. especially when you are driving a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not only seeing sharp, but you have to yeah. also see if there is any movement around you, right? So it's so small that when you are looking at an image, you cannot see the whole, unless it's a stamp. <laughs> or unless you go very far away, but then you don't see the details. Which means that when you get close to an image, you have to travel. You choose a, well, you, there is a point that attracts you at the beginning. It's different for everyone. But usually if, there are photo, if it's a photograph or a painting of people, it's usually the faces yeah. that attract you right away. Yeah. But then you have to trace the image, you see? Trace the whole thing. And this tracing is something that most people don't do. Mm -hmm. Or if they do it, they only do it very partially and then they go away. Yeah. This is why, what I call uh, image tourism. Mm -hmm. You're a, a visual tourist, mm -hmm. right? You're a visual tourist, but you're not really watching. You're not really looking. Okay, now if you look carefully and you trace every single element of the image, then there happens something which is similar to music. If there is something that doesn't belong to the image, you are out. Mm -hmm. if, if you are out too many times, then you don't feel the image. Mm -hmm. Because you are looking, we are al always looking for unity. You know, we are divided people. We, are, have du we have schizophrenia, if you want, dualism, anything you want. Because the intellect and our spiritual part are completely separate. One doesn't go along with the other one, and we need both. Yeah. So there is a dualism. The only, the only thing that is unified in us is our spirit. The only thing that is unified in us is our spirit. So when you are looking at an image or listening to a concert, the only, if it's a unity, then we feel it spiritual. If there are no barriers in us then you are looking for that such a unity and the unity will only find by tracing. Mm -hmm. And then every, every element has to fit there. Sometimes there may be some element that doesn't fit, then you go out. Sometimes, as Chely Didake said, well, out of 100 concerts that I give, only about three are perfect. Someone makes a mistake. This instrument comes too early or too late. Mm -hmm or someone is not in tune. But if it's individual, if it's a few places where you are out, then it's not a disaster. The same thing with an image. If, if you are out in a few places, mm -hmm. it's not a disaster. But if you are out too often, then it is a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Then other people start to notice as well, right? That's right. Yeah. But they don't know why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the main thing. You, you see something is wrong, but you don't mm -hmm. know why or what. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And how does that translate to um, uh, giving an education? Because how do you um, say an image is right or wrong or you pass this, this assignment? No, I, I, I never say that an image is right or wrong. I give a very concrete example. Someone uh, shows me an image, or I show someone mm -hmm. an image, and I tell them uh, which elements fit, which elements do not fit, mm -hmm. uh, which elements are disproportionate, there is too much, which elements do not belong. But if everything fits in place, sometimes the image doesn't give you uh, something emotional or spiritual. So there is no rule. There's not, everything is so irrational mm -hmm. that you cannot tell in advance. But what I teach is the following. What to be conscious about? 
Okay. You have to be conscious of certain things. Yeah. Okay, at the beginning you are very conscious. Then that consciousness, slowly with time, goes to part of your intuition, goes to you as an intuition, and you don't, you're not even conscious of that anymore, but you see it right away. In other words, you stop being conscious and you feel it. Yeah. If I look at the, a subject, I can tell right away if it's going to work or not. Okay. Okay, now, um, what, I can, what I can teach is to prepare the ground for something meaningful to, to be created. In other words, I never know if you respect everything, mm -hmm. if something meaningful will be created. There's no such a thing. But if you don't respect certain principles, and you create something meaningful, it's like winning the lottery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the difference. So I cannot teach you how to create something meaningful, but how to prepare the ground mm -hmm. to create something meaningful. This is what I can teach. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> For instance, uh, if you take a picture of, uh, if you take a painting of Rembrandt, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a rich background. The background may be mainly, let's say, very dark, but with colors, with shades and so on. Then you begin to see the relations between the background and the person, the portrait. Yeah. Now, if you take it into Photoshop mm -hmm. and you make the whole background black, you change completely the character of the picture. Mm -hmm. Then the person becomes very important, but there's a relation that is missing. Mm -hmm. For instance, so these things I can I can show. Yeah. Or for instance, uh, another thing there was a painter and a musician at the same time. That was Paul Klee. You probably heard of him, a Swiss painter. Yeah. Okay. Now, since he was a professional violinist mm -hmm. and one of the great paint, greatest painters of the 20th century, then he was always was capable of comparing music and, uh, and uh, painting. Then he said, okay, when you are listening to music, everything is given to you. There's nothing you can change. The sequence of sounds, how long they last, rhythm and so on. You are simply an auditor, but there's nothing you can change. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're looking at an image, the situation is different because everything depends on your trace or your tracing of the image. Now it can happen, when you have really a very good work of art, that when you, when you choose a different trace, your emotions change. And that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I show paintings of Vermeer, mm -hmm. where, where you can do that, or a painting of Munk, where you, if you go in one direction, it becomes depressing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go in a different direction, it's very optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the beauty of an image compared to music, yeah. that you can change emotions according to your tracing. Yeah. There's a lot of information that I have to process <laughs> now. Thank you. Fine, you are very welcome. Yeah.